Welcome back. Episode 3 is going to be the Scout. Took me a few days here to get it all prepped up. We're battling the uh, flu going through the house right now, so good times, right? Um, painted up a few different versions, uh, mostly difference being more white and highlights on him, so the colors popped a bit more. I'll go do some end photos at the end of the video to kind of show that too. Ironically, those beards are actually the same color of contrast paint. That is the effect of uh, your undercoat and what that will do to contrast paints. Once we get that done, I'll try to crank out the engineer video before Christmas, assuming I'm not on my deathbed too with the flu. And then we've got lots and lots and lots and lots more to go but I'm determined we're gonna try to do this hope you enjoy episode 3 of the scout Yeah, I got a grappling hook. What are you going to do about it? All right, welcome back to episode three. We're going to be painting the Deep Rock Galactic board game Scout today. I'm going to stick to the cover art. And as usual, I'm going to focus primarily on Army Painter speed paints for this one. Uh, I did do some in-game screenshots as well. You'll see here just to try to give myself some more ideas on you know, how to color some of these accessories on the guy. He looks like he has a sleeping bag under his backpack and some, some different tidbits there. So looked over that, but ultimately we are gonna stick to the blue clothing with some brown leather padding kind of off the cover right there. As part of my priming, I did use some Army Painter War Paints plate mail again. We did the pickaxe, the visor and headphone pieces on the head, the gun, the hand grenades, the knee pads, and the steel toe looking plate on the boot. Everything else I come back for after the painting to touch up like buckles and buttons, etc. So for the beard, I tried to go for kind of a lighter orange so I did a mix again of contrast paints, uh, about two parts fire giant orange to one part zealot yellow and tossed in a drop of the uh, one part of the medium as well, just to kind of, you know, dilute it out a little bit. So this was a bit of an experiment as well. I painted up two models simultaneously. One is the basic black primed base coat with a white down spray, the Zenithal approach. The other was that, but then I went back and hit up a lot of the areas that I really wanted to pop with extra white. And it is a radical difference with these Army Painter speed paints. Uh, that your base coat can really affect the color and how they appear. And that can work for you or against you, I suppose. Um, once you start to get used to the characteristics, it's kind of a lot of fun to see how 
it plays into things. But I'll show some uh, photos at the end. The beard color is actually identical on the two that I did, but the one that was upped in the white actually shows kind of an orangey red beard, whereas the other one is almost a brown. Uh, same with the flesh tones as well. One, the one that's whiter is a lot more kind of reddish flesh, whereas the other one is a darker tone. So something to bear in mind with Army Painter Speed Paints, uh, your undercoat does play into what it's going to look like, and you can use that to your advantage. For the Scout's clothing, I went with two parts magic blue to one part of the speed paint medium just to dial back that color intensity a little bit. Haste makes waste. Now I gotta go back and clean up where I got the blue I didn't want. So, white paint is your friend. For the boots, straps, shoulder pads, gloves, etc., leather bits, uh, I went with about a two to three parts hardened leather to one part darkened wood just to give it a little richer brown tone versus that reddish brown that the hard leather is out of the bottle.
episode decision time here. I decided I didn't want to leave the knee pads and the steel toed boots uh, plate mail colored, so I chose hardened leather to go over them and give them a more coppery bronze colored metal. At this point, I decided I wanted to darken up the boots and shoulder pads, uh, some of the trim, the gloves. So I went and reapplied that same color we used at the beginning for the leather and just put a second coat on any spot I wanted to make a even darker brown out of. So Zealot Yellow, I chose that for the sleeping bag and then ultimately decided to paint over the grenades, flares, whatever those are. Uh, some of the gun trim on the top of the gun and the stock of the gun, the very top of the pickaxe and the front light, the little lens on his shoulder light. Crusader skin for his flesh, which pretty much consists of his nose, uh, some cheekbone there and such under his left eye, and the front and back of his very bald head, either side of that uh, band holding his little optical array on his head there.
I went with Gravelord Gray to hit the gun where we didn't highlight earlier the headgear over the ears and the eyepiece and the majority of the pickaxe. Uh, you could pretty much use, you know, any dark wash here though, no oil, whatever you got just to, you know, darken up that metal a bit. So I decided to deviate from the speed paint for the basing this time, a little bit. Uh, I don't have a lot of options for stores where I live. We have one game shop within 30 miles, and I have a Michael store, conveniently, that has opened recently. So I have been buying some inks from them. So for the bottom, we're using some Dollar Rowney, I believe I said that right, uh, black ink, just to go ahead and cover the base, the rock, uh, all those parts, and I'll, I'll come back and work on the rock after that. I do mix in a drop of matte medium with a couple drops of ink just to make sure it's not super shiny though, just to take that gloss off. All right, now we circle back to some Army Painter War Paint plate mail again. We're going to go back and re-up the edges on the pickaxe, uh, the little headlight lamp on the shoulder, the gun, all the little bolts in the armor, uh, the backpack buckles, pouch buttons, and I tried to get, and I'm sorry for the blurry video, there's a little circular top on the grenades. So I went back and tried to do that little inner circle with some shiny silver and all of those as well. So for the rock, I experimented a little bit. I had bought a couple of the colors from the new Metallics line Army Painter did. Uh, there's a cool tainted gold I like a lot. And there was also this gemstone, which is like, it could probably pass for like a red plate mail metallic steel. But I thought I'd try to go for some nitra effect here on the rock. So I put down the gemstone. Um, my expert judge, my 11 year old told me, no, not red enough, dad, that is not nitra. So we then proceeded to slather some slaughter red on top of it. And I'm pretty happy overall. It, it gives the effect. I'll call it nitra. Job done. Keep at it and you'll make it through. All right, there we go. We are done with the scout. He is tabletop ready. Pretty happy with how this guy came out. He was a little more challenging to paint than the first two, simply because he has more accessories and less plates of armor. You know, he's got more going on. Uh, it still boggles my mind when you look at the two versions I paint. Just that reminder that your your amount of white, your amount of your undertone under these speed paints can really affect the color schemes. Um, but I chose the one on the right. He popped. He was brighter. Just, yeah, I just like them, look, the looks of them better. Uh, the engineer is going to be the next episode. It's already painted and done. I just got to do some video editing here and hopefully get it out before Christmas. And as always, if you enjoy these, please like and subscribe and keep motivating me to plow on forward through the rest. Talk to you later.